and welcome to Understanding Photography with Kim Ayres, episode 168. Oh, with Kim hold on Ayers, one sec. <laughs> that didn't quite work. I've set up the, um, the tablet in order to be able to monitor the um, comments as we go. Of course, I forgot I left the sound up, so apologies about that. Um, right, OK, where were we? Yes, welcome to Understanding Photography with Kim Ayres, episode 168. Today we're going to be talking, well, we're talking, I've, um, Jack has sent in a couple of images, we're going to be looking at those. Um, but also I, a little thing I kept in reserve, because there wasn't a lot going on this week, which is a little thing about how to do a two-way face. A face which is sort of, half of it is looking straight ahead and half of it is looking to one side. Uh, I really decided on that last night. So um, that's kind of, oh, one sec. No, I think that's OK. I was just <laughs> wasn't sure if Maggie was trying to come in then and let me know that my voice was high and squeaky or something. Who knows what will happen at this point? Right. Um, what am I going to do? Let's just do this and make a start. So, yes, hello, let's try again. Here we are, episode 168. If you happen to be watching live, then leave me a comment. Say hello. Tell me where you're from. Tell me what the weather's doing. Let's get the chat started. Uh, this is Understanding Photography with Kim Ayres. So if you are looking to improve your understanding of photography, uh, then you have come to the right place. Make sure you subscribe and make sure you click like. Um, oh, down here, there's all these bits and pieces. If you are clicking subscribe, make sure to hit the notification bell so you know when the next one is happening. Uh, but generally speaking, unless there's another reason why not, these happen every Sunday at 3 p.m. here on YouTube, or 3 p.m. UK time. And of course, we have people from right across the world. So do check your local time for how, what, um, how that translates. So with that I'll get down, um, yes, I can see we've already got some uh, comments in. Susan says, hello, everyone, from another rainy day in Kakubri. Kakubri is, of course, only just nine miles down the road from here. And yes, it's kind of a bit dreary kind of grey overcast. I think it's just stopped raining for the moment, but it could start again any minute. Fiji says hello and good evening from an, from India. Nadia says hello everyone from a rainy day in Fife. Janet says hello from an overcast Mississauga. Um, April says uh, greetings everyone from a sunny and warm day in Long Island, New York. Jack has joined us and says good morning everyone. Um, Marilyn says good morning slash afternoon from a sunny Denver. R Robert is here saying howdy all from Texas. Um, oh, VG says it's about to rain here too. Consecutive rains during nights. Well, is it? It must be the rainy season, the wet season in India, or at least your corner of it. Um, Maggie says hello from a damp Castle Douglas. April says if only night, if it's only at night, that's not so bad. Uh, Andy joins us and says hello from a rainy Hertfordshire. Rosemary joins us and says hello everyone. Greetings from Washington in the Pacific Northwest. Um, ah, ooh. Now, hold on a sec. Um, somebody says, uh, April says, you are muted, Kim. Uh, April says, I can't hear Kim. How about everybody else? OK, everybody else is saying it sounds OK for them. Um, right, OK, at least it's OK for everybody else. That's fine then. So just refresh your, um, refresh, just double check that. And that probably will do it nine times out of ten. Other than that, um, check your speakers or that you haven't accidentally put your, um, put it on mute. Uh, where are we? Uh, Pat says, endless rain. I'm uh, worrying about my gutters. Um, OK, Susan saying sounds OK for her. Rosemary saying coming in. Um, April's just refreshing. Meg says hello, everyone. And Sandra says hello, everyone from a cloudy Birmingham. And she can hear me and everybody else can hear me. OK, April, so only you. Right, so hopefully that's all sorted. Right. Where shall we start? So, yes. So what I'm going to do is... Um, I'll start off with with Jack. Um, Jack sent in a couple of images, um, but then I'm going to move on afterwards to showing you how to create this really weird um, face idea. But I'll come back to that. That will be in the second half. Uh, so let's make a start. So uh, try and juggle around here. So Jack sent in two images. So uh, let me do that and we'll that's not what I meant to do. That's what I meant to do. Yay. Right. OK. So this is the first one and this is this is the other one. Um, so Jack said um, I was out and about and I saw the seeds first. OK, I've done these the wrong way around. So these are the seeds. So they look like um, ash keys, is it? Or um, was it sycamore? I can never remember. These are the ones which I think spring off. And then when you let them go, they kind of swirl down a bit like a kind of helicopter. 
always fun. Um, I was hoping to have them to be a real eye puller um, in, my, in my attention, but that doesn't seem to get the focus like I was hoping for. And then the flower, which is this one, is from my garden and is uh, full of bloom. But again, in my opinion, it just does not sound, uh, pull the eye like I was looking for. Maybe you can see something I do not. Maybe it's just the colour that needs to be improved on. So whether it's this photo or it's this photo, um, Jack's kind of feeling that he knows he's onto something. He's seeing something there which is feeling... Um, really, uh, you know, there's definitely something worth photographing. There's a reason he's felt he's brought the camera up to his eye, but it's just not delivering in the way that he wants to. And he's not quite sure what's going on or why. And to be honest, I, I think, you know, I can see where you're going with both of these. This here, this one here has wonderful textures and it's got layers going back and we've got these you know we've still got the the greens of the kind of the new the new parts of the shoots we know that within the next few weeks um, as autumn comes on they're all going to dry up and become these brown tips like this so we do get to the point where you throw them in the air and they spin round and that lovely kind of little childhood thing um still a bit exciting <laughs> um and so we've got these fantastic textures kind of coming in here but it's not quite grabbing the way you want it to. Similarly, when we come here, gorgeous bloom, lovely textures in the middle part here, um, the, 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 down in the, in the, um, the ah, suddenly forgotten which part, not the petals, the stamen, no, stamen, mm, yeah, forgotten what the middle bit is called. Anyway, that bit. <laughs> Somebody can remind me. Um, so lovely textures, lovely colors, but you're right, there's, which is somehow not quite grabbing in the way that I think it has the potential to do. Now, I think, Jack, here, really, there's a kind of the, the, the solution to both these photos comes from the same place. And essentially, there are two aspects to it. One is the light and the angle of the light. And the other is the composition and in term in what I mean by that is the aspect of composition is I think it's a case of either go closer or go further back. We talked before about the idea that an awful lot of photos would really benefit if you either took two steps back or took two steps forward. Now, OK, maybe two steps is a bit big for this, but that no, with, with something this close is that notion of, I think, with something like this, either you fill the space or you give a border you either give a border to so that you can see the context of the flower. So you've got the green all around it. The, the petals have a little bit of edge around them or you go in closer and actually the maybe the middle part here is the bit that takes up all the picture. And so you sort of come in something like this. This doesn't quite feel right. I would have gone maybe slightly lower to, to get this part rather than pointing down and away from us pointing slightly more towards us in the camera i think um but in essence i think you're compositionally you come in closer like this or you zoom back out further and give it a context of the garden and when i look at this one i kind of get a similar feeling that again um there's these fantastic keys kind of hanging here now you either pull back out further and you get a sense of the context of them. Are they hanging in a branch? What's the background doing? Is there, even if it's just a bouquet kind of background, but I think maybe you pull back and get a bigger sense of the keys. Or you zoom in closer and really make the most, go macro, get make the most of this, these incredible textures that are on here. And I think either way, you then end up with a slightly more interesting photo. So closer in or further back. And the other aspect to this is what I said about the light. And again, there's a sense of here where the light in both of them, I think there's, there's a sense of it not quite being in the right direction. Um, this one's not so bad. Side, what you've got is you've got a side light coming in, but maybe a backlight. I think often with flowers or even with the keys as well, a backlight I said before, backlight is kind of the photographer's secret weapon. And I think sometimes a backlight can really lift things. Either that or you want a, an absolute side light, 
which is then going to show off all the textures in a, um, and really kind of bring them out. Let me, what I think I will do is I want to show you a couple of examples of what I mean in, in the different, um, in a different aspect. So in terms of, um, say in terms of backlight or something like that. Now you can go the kind of full silhouette. Where's the F gone? Get rid of that. Um, and, you know, at that point you'd kind of make now. Your, your bloom probably wouldn't work in silhouette because it's the shape and what's making it so lovely is the notion of the colour of it. Um, but the keys, some of those, um, is it sycamore or ash, I can't remember now, with the, the, the keys, I think the seeds, they, they have the potential to play around with. But that's maybe a bit strong. But if we take something like this, on the other hand, um, this one here, is where we're using the backlight. And what we're doing is we're allowing the, the light to actually kind of create this beautiful edge light and also come through this, that sort of very slight translucency so that so the petals themselves seem to glow. It's not reflected light, it's actually the light coming through the, the leaves. And it just, it, there's a, such a magical quality to these. Um, all right, okay, I'm just, I've seen a couple of, uh, Comments here just to kind of come in. Um, VG likes the texture, um, and and also uh, Pat says gorgeous bloom. April likes the texture. Um, Rosemary says the textures are beautifully sharp, um, and yeah, creative silhouette. Okay. Um, oh, Pat saying Woody is looking spry. Hope Kim is also. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll come back to that one. Um, uh, okay. So next, oh yeah, and April says very pretty with the light shining through the orange flower. So yes, okay, so what we're talking about here then is this notion of, now, so where's the light coming from? And sometimes if you can get that backlight and if you have to have a flower which allows for, which doesn't become completely opaque um, and the light does kind of come through the petal somewhat out and you can get this beautiful kind of golden halo edge, edge light on it. I think that that's something which can then really lift the flowers. Sometimes though you don't need direct light um, or sometimes you, uh, what's, well, yeah, um, what was, yes. So that's the kind, that's if you're going kind of backlight. Now the other thing I wanted to talk about was the notion of the kind of further in or closer out, uh, closer in or further out, <laughs> not further in or closer out. Um, so an example of that um, might be, are we going to get? that one okay so hold on a sec ah there we go that's what i was looking for um so here we've got a rose and we don't know we don't see the edge of the rose that actually what we do is we allow it the the whole picture to be filled by the rose and i think that kind of creates it it creates interest we've we've got our sharp bit just on the tips of the petals and then it kind of softens and disappears in um, another example of this would be this peony, which was just about to open. And again, we've kind of gone into the middle. We've, we've created our focal point is, is here. It's sharpest here. And as it sort of moves out, it gets softer. Um, and it, it, with the focus and, and this kind of idea of playing with the flowers, I think is, is another way to go there, Jack is, is to, uh, you know, really fill the space with it. The alternative to that is to not fill the space and to actually create a, um, a space around it. So in that case, we might go to something like this. Now, in this case, this is a dying tulip. Um, and we've just got enough edging around it to give it that sort of sense of context. And that's this whole wonderful shape that you get with the flower. Um, and I think, again, if you if we were to do this, if we were to zoom in, you'd want to zoom in something like this so that it filled the whole picture. And then you find a part in it, whether it's the tip of a petal or whether you wanted to focus in on the, the stamens um, or another aspect or something. And then find your kind of abstract shapes within it. But you then fill the, fill the whole picture with the flower. If you're not doing that, then allow it to be outside. Because if you do a kind of halfway, something like that, where some of it's chopped off and some of it isn't, 
it's less fulfilling, I think. It, it just kind of feels like you need to be closer in or you need to be further back. Um, another option, I, ha I know I had another option. Yes, okay, let's say we took um, this one here. Um, so this crocus coming down from above and we've got a side light the, the sun's kind of coming in from the side and it's just hitting the tip of the stamen here which is is then glowing that little bit more um, with the light is sort of partially coming through but the, it's all fading out we've got a very narrow depth of field here but again you would either kind of go in close and concentrate on something like that or you come out and we've just got enough around it and but whereas if you were to do something like that and you're just tipping off bits of it but not all of it it just ends up being that little bit less satisfying. And then finally, another example then, um, if, yeah, not that one, um, that I want to, to show is this one. So in this case, again, um, yeah, F2, where is that F? Let me get rid of that. I, um, so we've got the sweet peas here and we're showing the whole of the sweet peas. And you know, again, that works best. If we just sort of did part of it, it wouldn't quite look right. It looked like we've sort of chopped a little bit off. And the alternative is to go much closer. And in this case, actually, I did a macro shot on one of these as well, where I think you can then have fun where it doesn't really matter whether you know whether it's a sweet pea or not. We've got all these raindrops in here. We've always we've kind of got the background starting to appear in almost like a being magnified in one of the raindrops in the back here. But we've got these sort of wonderful textures and it's all about that abstract, um, the abstract notion of creating line and shape and form. And so that's the bit that's, most, that's the most important. So really then, um, what we're talking about here, sorry, oh, loads of windows to close. <laughs> um, is I think Jack when we come back to your photos is that you either need to be closer in and not have the outside so that we you're looking for a part of the photo so that it becomes um, it does become near abstract or even actually does become abstract and it's about the line and the shape and the color or you step out and you give the flower a context you have a little bit of space around it space to breathe if you want um, but you're talking about the shape of the flower and that little bit of in between I think is where it falls down and similarly then with your your seeds um, uh, I think same kind of things happening and then the, the other thing to talk about is the light and I think if you can either look at backlight or even a kind of a more muted light um, sometimes depending on the kind of thing you're doing just to allow for shape to take if shape is taking precedence um, sometimes light you know a hard hard sunlight can kind of get in the way and a reflected light a bounce light is some a little bit softer sometimes works better so creating slightly softer shadows or the the magical backlight so i hope that gives you some thoughts there jack um i thanks very much for sending both those images in um so yeah, and that gives it you know i it gave me a chance to sort of but it, explore the ideas and, and like I say in essence you know, both suffer from the same thing so yeah thank you very much uh, other comments oh I can see we've got um, where are we um, textures rosemary textures beautifully sharp uh, April creative silhouette oh yeah that's right uh, Pat says woody looking spry again not yeah, a little bit I uh, to just a, a wee diversion here then or for those who are following um, I'm suffering from quite a really, really nasty bout of sciatica, and we're now up to over six weeks since it first pounced on me. And in this time, I've not been able to do any work. I missed a couple of podcasts while it was at its most extreme. In the last couple of weeks, I've been to an acupuncturist who didn't really help, and I've been to an osteopath who has. Not completely, we've just done got one or two sessions, but I've, there's a definite sense of improvement and I'm feeling quite hopeful. I get to see him again next Friday. So I'm hoping that there could be advancement on from that. So making progress at last, because I did feel like I'd stalled for three weeks and was getting quite depressed about it. So um, <laughs> thanks for asking, Pat. That's the answer to that one. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, oh, Peter Wilson has joined us saying a belated hello from a wet Annan. So glad you could make it along, Peter. Um, Meg says, I really like the pop of colour in the sun. Um, and VG liked the dying flower. Thought it was interesting. April loves the macro. 
And Jack says, yes, sure does help. Um, hope it helps others too. And April says, glad to hear you're improving. Great, okay, thank you. So thank you, Jack, for sending that in. Uh, thank you, Pat, for asking after me. And thank you for the other comments. Um, right, so... Uh, just a little quick reminder then that if you find these podcasts useful, interesting or entertaining, then buymeacoffee.com forward slash Kim Ayers is one of the ways you can help um, support these podcasts. Um, another way is bring your friends along, tell them all about it and let's help grow this community of ours. Um, quick little thing now, next week, uh, now, not totally, I think next week I'm going to show you some photos I took for a ceramicist. Um, uh, called Francis Ross and um, so I'm going to dig those out I did a shoot for her um, back earlier in the summer and I'm going to sort of talk about some of the photos I took and the, the, the reasons why we took them and some of the creative decisions behind that there will also be a couple of slots for feedback so if you would like to get feedback on your own photos best way to learn when we're always looking at our own photos, we are too close. We can never, you know, we've all got our own blind spots. We can see other people's blind spots relatively easily. We can never see our own. That's why they're blind spots. Um, so blind spots to our own photos, send your photos in. Tell me where your kind of sticking points are and I will do my best to help. Um, right, okay. So yes, got a couple of slots for that. Make sure you do that. So you can either put them into the Facebook group, Understanding Photography with Kim Ayers, or you can send them to me via email, kim at kimayers.co.uk. Right, okay. So now what I want to do, I think, for, is I'm, <laughs> I'm going to show you the, um, the roughly how to create something like this for anybody who happens to be interested. Now, uh, uh, slight apologies to Pat, and I, um, I know... Pat has seen this photo before and was never entirely comfortable with it. Nor is my wife, Maggie. She never quite likes this photo either. It is just a little bit freaky. Now, I won't, I'm not gonna lay claim to inventing this concept. This is purely a concept I saw somewhere else where you have a half face where, depending on how you're looking at it, it either seems to be looking off to one side or it seems to be looking straight at you. It's a bit like that kind of duck rabbit sketch where you, it's either a duck or it's a rabbit and you can see either very and flip back and forward but you can never see both at the same time and I think the eye does the same thing with this you see it looking forward at you you see it looking to the side and your eye flickers back and forwards very quickly but you're never quite able to properly see them both at the same time it feels unsettling um, but I've seen this I've seen this before and it took me a while I thought I thought I was quite cool I thought it was quite fun so what I want to decided to do was show you how you can create this um, yourself. So basically what we're going to do, what you do is you start off with taking a couple of photos. Now, um, so that I don't end up embarrassing anybody else, the, I'm just going to show you photos of myself. Um, so this, you know, the easiest way to do it. So in essence, what we're doing is we're taking two photos. We're taking a photo of us ourselves or whoever you want to do this with. Maybe you've got a willing partner or a grandchild or a you know, just somebody off the street you managed to grab who's quite up for a bit of fun. And you take a photo face on and you take a photo side on. Now, little bits of uh, quick things to understand here is the idea that first of all, you've got to use exactly the same lighting setup. You wanna have the same lighting setup in both photos. The other thing I would suggest, because when I was experimenting with this, I discovered um, didn't work, is that if you're gonna do this you're better off having an all-round lighting okay you want to have a lighting which is pretty evenly spread so the left side of the face is more or less the same lightness as the right side of the face if you have a harsh shadow actually when you come to join these two photos together it just doesn't tend to work quite as well so your key things here are the um you want to get the lighting the same for all photos, exactly the same setting, same focal point. Say, you know, focus on the eyes, focus on, um, you want to have the same lighting, same focus, neutral background as well. In this case, I've just got a piece of black fleece hanging down on the background. Um, that makes it easier, whether you go black, whether you go white. If you've got a patterned background or some cut or something like the kitchen or living room or the garden or anything like that, when you come to merge these together, it really does desperately complicate the situation. So what we do then is I'm going to, let's open this with 
Photoshop. And, um, and then what we'll do is we'll also open this one with Photoshop as well. Um, so we end up with both photos in here. Um, and now what we're going to do is we will, let's just, we'll take this, copy it and paste it onto here. And then what we can do is we reduce this to say something like a sort of 50%-ish so we can kind of see through. And then what we're going to do, let's just move that out of the way, is we're going to kind of line this up and where we want to line it up is around the eye and the nose. So you can start to see that it's this bit here which is the bit where we've got it kind of going both ways. Now really what you have to do, what you're trying to do is just find the right place. We've got eyebrows, we've got a line up, we've got an eye, we've got a line up, we've got a nose and we've got the mouth and in my case the moustache and beard. And actually to be honest the moustache and beard kind of help a little bit for me because it's just a kind of it becomes a slightly textured mess which blends slightly more easily so what I'm trying to do here is, is I'm just kind of lining up and deciding where the line needs to go and as much as anything else I think I'm really going to concentrate on getting the eyebrows and the eye about there the nose is almost there the mouth is then lined up there as well now that I've got that what I can do is I can go, um, let's say, uh, what was I going to do? Which way round to do this? You can do this a number of different ways. And there's, yeah, in essence, what we're kind of going to do is we get, I'll tell you what I'm going to do as well. I'm going to duplicate that layer and I'm going to duplicate that layer just because it kind of gives me a couple more options here. And I know I'm going to kind of come back to one of these. So, what I'm going to do first of all with the layer below is, or rather on this layer, is let's select, in fact I'll tell you what I'm doing, ah, what's that doing? Go away, didn't mean to do that, close that. <laughs> um, let's select subject, right, and okay, so I've got the sub subject selected here and then I'm going to invert that. Maybe I should have just done select background, um, but I'll just select inverse. And then on the one below, I'm going to uh, mask. Is that what I want to do? So the, the, I'm just trying to get my head around this. This is stupid. Um, ah, but of course I've got, right, I know what I needed to do. I needed to put a layer in between. A black layer in between so that's it so what I've done is I've kind of masked that um, here so that we've got this part is overlapping here but now what I can do is I can mask this layer let's take him up to 100% again and paint him out so black paints out the layer that's above and white paints out the layer below Okay, I can see here I've got slight problems now with backgrounds as well, but we'll come back to that. So what we can see here then is I'm painting out this side, but I'm trying to keep in that side. And then what I'm going to do is, oh, what did I do? <laughs> History, delete layer mask, didn't mean to do that, delete layer, no, didn't mean to do that. Go back to this. Where are we? Brush. There we go. Yes. Sorry, it's... Uh, okay, and then I'm going... Sorry, on the mask, I see I now paint this eye back in. So what I'm trying to do is keep more of this version of me on the outside, but I don't want to start painting in too much on that side. So we can see here that I kind of bring in the eyebrows and the, the side of the head here. Now it's all getting a bit fuzzy up here so I'm going to swap around to the white and then just kind of bring that bit back in so the hair and here we go the hair goes too far that way. So with a little bit of kind of swapping back and forth you kind of get to a point whereby it's you know, decide whereabouts you feel that that kind of feels like it's um, 
uh, not that one authentic or not so you've got to play back a little bit back and forth depending on the picture that you've got um, and we'll just kind of do that now um, somewhere along here yeah there we go so we need to kind of paint his yeah, do we go back for the neck so it's then deciding where we want to go with the neck this background's gone a bit funny but we will sort that one out in a minute um, but you can see that we're starting to now get the general shape of it and um, at this point then now what I might want to do if we come back here if we come back to this one what I think I actually want is I want to have a little bit of a kind of a uh, little bit of this neck here so I'm going to drag this over to about there just line up that little bit of collar something like that there and then I can mask this one off no nope, that wasn't what I meant to do um, out mask that's it and then I'm just going to paint the neck bit back in here something like that um, and then I need to get rid of the one that's underneath and then that way that just kind of makes that little bit of neck feel slightly more like it's fitting in rather than you end up with a hard line around it and more or less this is kind of where we end up um, not that just kind of in there um, once we've got this at this point we could start sorting out the background so if I just select all that copy and paste ooh, not that select all there we go so that's all now onto one layer now I've got that on one layer if I want I can kind of create a, a black brush and just start kind of painting over over this um, maybe I want to kind of I could I could also mess around with dark and light areas and dodge and burn and and the like so let's let's I'll tell you what let's then take this into camera raw and then what we can do in camera raw is maybe what I will do is I will take the blacks and drag them down a little bit something like that and then that's kind of getting rid of these sort of over light background maybe push the contrast a little bit um, and then maybe grab the uh, clarity I think and just kind of give a little bit of that up the exposure a touch shadows down a fraction and we just sort of move around and play until we've got something that we figure kind of works and at that point then what we can do is we can then crop in with how we want it whether we want to have it square or whether we want to have it more portrait um, depending on your own personal preferences and more or less <laughs> that's it so I mean obviously when I did the thing myself I take a little bit more time to play around with it um, and but you know for the sake of you know just showing you in 10 minutes how how you can kind of get there you know then if you're really wanting to kind of um, muck around you can kind of come in and you can start doing the um, where are we dodge and burn you know bring out a little bit more highlights in the eyes make that um, are we doing that yeah mid tones let's take that up a little bit here and we need to deselect and just brighten up the eyes a little bit something like that um, maybe I want to get a little, little bit of dead skin on the nose not quite so complimentary that and the odd nasal hair very unflattering <laughs> so we all get round to doing the bits of photo stray stray hairs playing around there beard hairs so you can sort of sit and play however much you want but in essence then this is where we end up we end up with this kind of weird face that looks like it's both looking straight ahead and going sideways so hope you found that interesting apologies to pat again because i um i know that's never really been one of your favorite images um right i saw a couple more um uh, like comment here rosemary says as you paint away one layer it really drives home your point of making sure the lighting is consistent yeah absolutely and that's that's where 
you know, the experimenting comes in. If, if you had too much shadow on one side of the face, then when you try and join them together, you suddenly realise that one side ends up being darker than the other, and then you have to start playing around with micro levels of lightning and darkening, and it's a pest. Better off, make sure that the lighting is overall, is pretty well spread around, that you're not dealing too much with shadows, and then it's even, evenly spread. Um, Fiji says, freaky yet great edit. <laughs> um, and uh, Robert says, thank you for demonstrating this technique. I've wanted to understand how this was done for some time. And Jack says, very nice, have to try it. I think you absolutely have to try it. It is, it, well, if you're into your editing, that's it, that is. You know, if you've got an editing program that allows you to do layers and masks, I, what, why wouldn't you? Well, I know Maggie wouldn't, and I know Pat wouldn't, but <laughs> um, but if you're of that kind of mindset that just loves to get in and play um, with the editing, I think it's just a fun, such a fun thing to do. So anyway, that's that. I wanted to uh, wanted to do that. So pretty much that's really the end then of this um, this podcast. Uh, thank you once again to uh, Jack for sending in the images. If you want the podcast to last slightly longer and you want a little bit more information, uh, a little bit more content, then make sure you send me your images. The, these podcasts are primarily built around the idea of me helping you to understand photography. I can't help you if you don't let me know where your gaps are in your understanding. You can ask questions, you can send me images. Um, there's, there's anything that's photography related, I will do my best to help you. Um, when you don't send me anything, I mean, that was, I've kept that one in reserve for a quiet week. It's now been used up. I don't have a lot left in reserve. So send me your stuff, whether it's questions, whether it's um, pictures that you would like personal feedback on, and I can do my best to help you. Like I say, periodically I do photo shoots. Next week I will also talk a little bit about the photo shoot I did with Ceramicist Francis Ross. But in the meantime, um, I can still give feedback on a couple of pictures as well. So make sure you send them to me. I yeah I think that's pretty much about it so thank you once again to Jack for um, sending in the images and thank you too for um, ah, where are we I'm trying to do that one yeah <laughs> thank you also to everybody here who has turned up viewed commented um, said hello give me uh, give me feedback as you've gone and uh, all the rest of it um, oh Fiji says I've taken a pic of mine with hands closing my eyes later painted back on the face I think I shared this for a challenge yeah that's another one that I've seen where you place your hands you, you do two pictures one straight on and then you take another picture with your hands over your face and then sort of blend the, the blend it back in. I've seen vari variations on that as well. So yes, you can have a lot of fun with these kind of multiple layers. Um, and it's quite a nice kind of introduction to what you can do with these things. Um, right. Okay. So that's us. Thank you once again. Uh, see you all next week. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>